apply the optimization problems part two. Let's recall our guidelines, right, to solve an optimization problem in general, right? Draw a picture if the picture is not given, right? Just like I drew this box, and like I drew this, the, the, the rectangle, right? It helps. The step two, determine which quantity is to be maximized or minimized. Remember, optimization for us means either maximizing or minimizing, right? Either or. So have that clear. Step three, write a formula for a quantity to be maximized, right? Area equal X times Y, or sometimes volume equal X times one Z, where Z is the height, right? Um, a question, uh, step four, write an equation related to the variables that you label. This is done through the constraint, right? They will give you a constraint, some limitation that will set up an equation between the variables, isolate one of the variables and replace it into your objective function, right? That way you will get a function in terms of just one variable. Once you have that, guys, take derivative, set it equal to zero and solve for the variable. That will give you the value of X or whatever the variable you're dealing with that will maximize or minimize your function, okay? So now let me show you uh, another form here. This, uh, another uh, um, scenario where you have to have a different constraint. Uh, I will explain, okay? This problem has been broken down in like six or seven parts for you to go through the whole process, okay? Look, the problem says a farmer plans to fence in a rectangular pasture adjacent to a river. See the figure below. River, this is what has to be fenced by this pasture. The pasture must contain 320,000 square meters, right? This, the area now is fixed. Not the perimeter, but now the area is fixed. No fencing is need along the river. This doesn't need material for fencing, right? The river. We'll take care of that. Follow the steps below to find the length X and the width Y of the rectangular pasture that will require the least amount of fencing. Least amount of fencing, key word here, least amount of fencing. All right, now, what is the objective of this problem? Anyone could tell us guys, what is the objective, the goal of this problem? Goal, let's write it here. Goal. Minimizing. Aha, minimizing. Yeah, very good, very good. Minimizing, right? Minimizing. Minimize. Goal. Minimize. Right? But minimizing what? What choice would you choose here? A, B, C, or D? Mm -hmm. Minimizing what? Minimizing. And hint, look at this. Um, D. Aha, uh -huh. D, minimize fencing, right? Because they are looking for the least amount of fencing, the least amount of material, the least amount of fencing, right? So because of that, it should be this, right? Everybody follow guys? Minimize fencing. Very good, excellent, right? Yeah, so we were used to maximize, but this time, we should minimize. But the good news is that the method should be the same because remember that the derivative equal to zero is associated not only to the peak of the mountain, also to the bottom of the valleys, right? So on the bottom of the valley, also derivative equal to zero. So the strategy in the end will be the same, okay? All right, so let's move on. Now, next question. Question two, the objective is to minimize the amount of fencing, right, the goal. If we represent the amount of fencing using the variable P, write a formula to compute P using X and Y. This is called the primary equation, right, or objective function. Yeah, but now notice, right, in this diagram, I usually associate X with the smallest length, Y with the largest, but here they did the opposite, but 
the, the, in the end, the results should be the same. So let's just use this labeling, right? The, the one that I'm giving here for you to see that it also works. So what should be P equal to? Anybody could tell us? P, the, the fencing here. What should we be equal to in terms of X and in terms of Y? That's what they're saying, right? What's the formula for P? Equal, mm -hmm. anyone, any guess? It got a worse hint for you guys, right? What is the perimeter of this in terms of X and Y? Because that's what the fencing should be, right? Mm -hmm. So two Y plus X. Uh, Adela, you went by day, two Y, two Y, right, Y, plus y here, twice y, plus x. Excellent, excellent. So p should be equal to, let's write it here, right? p equal to twice y plus x, twice y plus x. Excellent, great. Moving on, part three. Pasture is constructed under a given constraint, right? What is the primary factor of that given constraint? So the constraint, is what here? Look, look I'm gonna go back to a problem and read this part for you. Look, the pasture must contain 320,000 square meters. So in other words, right? What is fixed here? The perimeter or the area? What is the constraint? Can you answer this part? Fencing or the area? area? The area, excellent, Maria. Area, right? Because they say that the area has to be fixed. They want to enclose your some fixed area for some reason. So this is the constraint, right? Yes, 320,000 per the area, very good area. Yeah, that's the constraint So this, is this. Now the constraint is an area of 320,000 square meters. Write an equation for the area in terms of X and Y. This is called the secondary equation, right? Or the constraint equation, remember? Yeah. So what should be the equation? Anybody would tell us? Mm -hmm. We can write it on the chat. What should be the equation for the constraint? What has to be fixed? You said the area, right? We said that the area has to be fixed equal to this, right? But what is the area in terms of X and Y? Mm -hmm. What is this in terms of X and Y? Yeah, X multiplied by Y, and we get the Y from the perimeter. Aha, uh -huh. there you go. Aha, uh -huh. very good, excellent, right? This is this. This is the equation, right? Excellent, right? For X, right? And then we have to solve for X. Now we solve for X. Now isolate X, right? Isolate X. Remember from the constraint, you isolate one variable, right? Usually I isolate Y. If you isolate Y, you will end up with the same thing, but now they're isolating X. You will see that it will not change anything, right? If you isolate X, this dividing both sides by Y, you get that X is 320,000 divided by Y, right? And as Adriana said, then this guy has to be put into the objective function here, right? Let me put this in here, right? Ah, it's X. Yeah, they, they just use different variables, but it's the same in the end. Yeah, it's there, right? You gotta put X there. Now, if you do that, right, they say, right, X will be equal to what? Well, X will be equal to this, so the, perimeter will be two Y plus X, but X we are saying is this. So in the end, we will have that P will be equal to, mm -hmm. P will be equal to the following. P will be equal to, it was a two Y plus X. So it will be two Y plus X, but X is this, right? 320,000 mm -hmm. over Y. Now, just uh -huh, here, right? Now, in order to facilitate the process of taking the derivative, allow me to rewrite this function as this, y raised to minus one. And now I'm ready to take the derivative, right? So here for y values of x and y is the value of p minimized. Well, now set 
prime equal to zero, right? We're gonna take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve, solve for our variable here, which is in this case, y, right? For y, good. So derivative should be equal to, derivative of this part, two here, plus minus one comes down, multiplies this 3,000, 320,000, and y raised to minus one stays with one less, minus one, minus one here, right? So derivative will be two minus 320,000, y raised to minus two, right? Very good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now we are supposed to set this equal to zero, right? And solve for our y. So let's do it carefully. Notice that the equation now is not that simple, right? But we will do it carefully, we will get it. Uh -huh. Do that. Now, now you will see that uh, I can transpose this to the other side and get that two is equal to 320,000 y raised to minus two, right? If you add this quantity to both sides, right? You get this. Now, one thing I can do is I can rewrite this as 320,000 over y squared, right? Y squared, multiply both sides of this by y squared, right? This is just algebra. So I will get two times y squared, equal here, these two guys cancel, 320,000. Dividing both sides by two, I get that this should be 160,000, right? You follow guys? Taking square roots, taking square roots, finally I get that y is equal to 400, I think. Mm -hmm. Very good. In the end, I can attach units. The lengths are being measured in meters. So I can say that this is gonna be 400 meters, right? Meters. As soon as I have Y, I can have the other variable, X. I have X isolated here. It's 320,000 over Y. So I do this 220,000 over Y, but Y is 400. Let's compute this in our calculator. Four into 32 is eight. Two zeros cancel, two zeros stay, right? 800, 800 meters. Uh -huh. Look, Y equal 400 meters, X equal 800 meters will minimize the fencing for the construction of this, right? See guys? For what number is X and Y is, the value of P minimized for X equal 800 meters and for Y equal 400 meters, right? So what this is saying is that if X is chosen to be 800 meters and Y is chosen to be 400 meters, this will require the smallest amount of fencing, right? And therefore will minimize the cost of fencing, right? Okay. Yeah, right. so this is in case the constraint function is the area, this is how you work. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at some problems on the worksheet, some other forms, right? Let's continue then with this uh, minimization problem now. We've done a lot of maximization problems. Let's see what happens happens when they ask you to minimize. And again, as I said, the strategy is the same, set derivative equal to zero, because remember on the peak of the mountain or on the bottom of the valley, derivative is zero, right? So that's the main idea. So for example, here, they are asking you to um, figure out what should be, Let's read it together. It says the price P of the of a certain computer system decreases immediately after its introduction and then increases. If the price P is estimated by the formula P equal 170 T squared minus 1700 G 
plus 6,400, where T is the time in months from its introduction, find the time until the minimum, minimum price is reached. That word minimum a keyword because it's telling me that I have to minimize, right? I have to minimize. So the goal is to minimize, but to minimize, all I gotta do is this, I gotta take the derivative of my objective function, which is explicitly written here, right? There's no need to look for this function, it's given, right? So all we gotta do is this, set derivative, equal to zero, mm -hmm. set derivative equal to zero, and then uh, solve for t, right? Solve for t, that will take us to the answer. And solve for t. Mm -hmm. Derivative of this function is just a 170 multiplied by two. What is that? We can find out in our calculator, right? Mm -hmm. 170 multiplied by two, what is that? Let's see. Calculator here. 340, right? Yeah, well, let's play safe. 340, uh-huh, very good. 340 times T minus, derivative of this part is minus 1,700 equals zero. We gotta solve for T. 340t equal to 1,700. Once you add this guy to both sides of the equation, once you transpose this guy to the other side, changing its sign, right? You get this. So t will be 340 into 1,700. But what is that? Well, let's use our decimal scientific calculator to find that out. Uh -huh. That is just five, five. In the end, feel free to attach units, right? The time is measuring months, so five months. Five months is what it would take for this um, computer system to achieve its minimum cost according to this formula, right? According to this modeling, right? Okay, guys. Try to do number two is similar, so give it a shot here. Do this, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we write the function here in case you don't see it well. P equal 190 times T squared minus 2100 times T plus 6,400. That is the, the price function in terms of time, right? In month time measure, yeah, so, so again, set your derivative equal to zero and solve, solve for t, right? That will take you to the answer, guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and sometimes students ask me, first of all, what about the ending point? Yeah, the ending point, you can analyze them. For example, t equals zero, but when you do the table, you will see that the answer is associated to this guy, the one that you get by setting the derivative equal to zero solving for t, right? We're trying to simplify our uh, strategy, our methods, right? Yeah, at this level, that's how you will get your answer. Aha, uh -huh. I see Sarah, figure this out. Uh, very good, Sarah, very excellent. Yeah, it, it's not that difficult. Again, guys, if you recall this basic um, strategy, it's, it's a strategy that's gonna help you in calculus too. So try to keep this in mind always. Maximum and minimum values are 99.9% .9 of the time associated to derivative equal to zero. Of course, there are some weird cases, but in general, that's what you should do. Very good, very good. Okay, so um, since we wanna cover more, more uh, uh, forms, let's just get this done, right? The derivative is gonna be two multiplying 190 is 380. You can check that in your calculator, right? Minus the derivative of this part will be 2100, right? 100. And then 
equal to zero, right? And then we're gonna solve for T. 380T will equal to 2100. And then 380 going into 2100 gives you what? Once you solve this uh, to one, zero, zero, over 380. Aha, uh -huh, my students are posing. Uh -huh, it, it, it shows 5.52. 5.52, which can be rounded to 5.5, right? 5.5 month, right? Months. In the end, feel free to attach the units. And that is this guy. Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. Excellent, excellent. Number two. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, moving on. Moving on. Uh, now, let's see number three. Number three is similar. Right, but it's usually just a cost function, but you want to minimize the cost function. So instead of PC, right, instead of TS, so you should be okay with this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now let's look for different forms. Uh -huh. This one, yeah, this is important form. Yeah, but probably for the sake of um, Variety, I don't want you to be surprised with S as a variable instead of T. Let's try this, we still have time and then we'll go over the, the GERD problem there. Yeah, very, very important problem there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then some finance application. Yeah, can you try this guys? Yeah, this one. Two. The cost function that they are talking about is this. Do not confuse this S with five is S, right? It's square minus four S, not five, right? S plus 1000, try this. It says the cost of a computer system increases with increased processor speeds. The cost C of a system as a function of processor speed is estimated by this function. Cost function equal five times S squared minus four S plus 1000, where S is the processor's speeds speed in megahertz. This is called megahertz. That's how you measure the speed of a processor, right? Find the processor's speed for which the cost is at minimum. We have to minimize, right? The goal is to minimize, but we know that minimizing or maximizing, what it takes is to take the derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for the variable. Aha. Ruby, uh, figure this out. Let me see number three. Mm -hmm. Number three. Aha, uh -huh. CG, Ruby, Oscar, excellent guys, very good. Yeah, you got it. Sarah also figured this out, right? Yeah, when we have the objective function, it's not so difficult because we just take derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for the variable that should take us to the answer, right? And in case you have two candidates, just compare them via evaluation, that will be it. All right, so set derivative of the cost function equal to zero and solve, and solve this time for the variable, which is S, right? The speed of the processor. All right, so C prime will be 10 times S minus four times uh, S derivative of that is just four equal to zero, right? Equal to zero derivative of this 1,000 zero. Uh, solve for S by adding four in both sides. This is equal to four. And S will be the quotient of these two guys, right? 10 into four, yeah. It's 0 0.4, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you don't remember how to do division by 10, moving the decimal point to 11, right? You can get it in the calculator, it's the same, right? Now, this should come out in megahertz, hertz, megahertz. Mm -hmm. Megahertz, and this is this guy, right? Very good, excellent guys, very good, very good. Uh -huh. This one, I think is similar, right? Similar, so you could try to do this at home, right? But this is different. So let's let's pay attention to this GERD problem. It's a nice problem. Um, deals with shipping of uh, items in two boxes, rectangular boxes. I, I, will, I will explain. Let me explain number five. And there is another GERD problem that you can do on your own after I explain to you this number five. 
All right, so it says, a private shipping company will accept a box for domestic shipment only if the sum of its length and girth, look, length is this, girth is all this distance around, all this perimeter, okay? Does not exceed 114 inches. What dimensions will give a box with a square N, this has the shape of a square, the largest possible volume, the largest possible volume, right? Aha, uh -huh. largest possible volume means that we have to maximize the volume, right? Maximize the volume. So let's write it as a goal, goal, maximize volume, maximize volume. But the good news is this, right? If you are maximizing or minimizing something, the method, the strategy should be the same, right? The derivative equal zero. But of course, we have to figure out here the objective function because the objective function is not given, right? Like in the previous exercises. All right, but this is the goal. And what is the constraint? Constraint or the limitation? Well, if you represent this guy with y, and again, I'm going back to labeling the longest with Y and the smallest with X. This, you can label it with X, X here, X here, X here, X here, okay? Then the constraint is that the girth, the sum of these four lengths, X plus X plus X plus X, four X, plus this length of the box plus Y, has to be fixed, it's fixed, it's equal to 114 inches, okay? So that's the constraint. No matter how you design this box, you have to respect this, four times X plus Y has to be equal to this. Now, goal maximize volume. Volume, remember, is width times length times height, right? So we will catch our volume here as what? X times X, times y, right? So x times x times y, which is just x times x, x is squared times y. So this is my volume function, right? x is squared times y. This is my constraint. But now from the constraint, you can see that if you subtract four x in both sides, constraint function, y, ends up being equal to 114 minus 4x, correct? Now, I have y in terms of x. I have my objective function here. I have to substitute y in here, right? Y in here so that my volume, my volume, my objective function will depend exclusively in terms of X. So when you do the substitution guys, notice you get this X squared times this 114 minus four X, right? Minus four X, uh-huh. So the volume of this box depends exclusively on X now, which is good for us because this fac will facilitate taking the derivative, right? Very good, minus, look, x squared times 4x, what's that? There is an invisible one here, one times four, four, but x squared times x to the first power, x cubed, right? x cubed, I hope everybody's okay with this, x cubed. It's a cubic function, right, the volume. Not a surprise, right, the, uh, the areas where quadratic functions, volume, cubic functions. All right, so now comes the, Last step, right? Mm, advice, organize this as this, 4x cubed plus 114x squared, right? So when you take the derivative, you will not get confused, right? Cubic term first, quadratic term following. Now, now we have to set our derivative, the derivative of our objective function volume equal to zero and solve and solve for our variable, which is in this case, x, right? x. 
Let's do that. The derivative of this part will be negative 12 X squared, right? Plus the derivative of this part will be two coming down, multiplying 114 is 228, right? X. And that has to be set equal to zero, right? Equal to zero. Uh -huh. Now I am going to factor out, I'm going to factor out a X, but together with the greatest common factor of these two, right? Or simply just X. Don't worry about figuring out the greatest common factor. Just do this. Perhaps it's the easiest way to deal with this. Factor out X. Factor out X. And you get this, right? X into this is this. X into this is this. Now solve this equation by setting each term containing the variable equal to zero. X equals zero minus 12 X plus 228 equals zero. Mm -hmm. Here I get a candidate for my solution X equals zero, but that doesn't look like a good candidate, right? Because X equals zero is basically nonsense when you are after constructing a three-dimensional box, right? Here I might get a better candidate for my solution. Uh -huh. Divided by negative 12, x equal 228 divided by negative. Uh, the negative signs will cancel each other out. So let's just do 228 divided by 12, right? Aha, okay. uh -huh. 19. Excellent, excellent, guys, right? Very good, very good. Yeah, use your calculator, please say, guys, if the numbers are not friendly. Aha. Uh -huh. Look, this one, nonsense, right? Nonsense, because uh, zero as a length doesn't make sense. So ignore it, ignore it. Nonsense, ignore it. Right? Nothing. This, keep it. X equal 19 makes sense, right? Uh, and then uh, quickly find the value of Y because they're asking you for the dimensions of the box, right? Height, length, and width. So the height and the width I have 19, right? but it's missing the length. Now, Y can be found once you find X. How, Professor? Well, remember we have here that Y is 114 minus, minus 4X, right? From there, from the constraint equation, substituting the value of X that you got, then you can find Y. So go ahead, take the calculator again, 114, minus four times 19, right? 38, 38, right? Yeah, do these computations carefully, guys. You will be given four hours for your final exam, right? So patiently get this done. So basically, uh, this is saying that um, if you choose X to be 19 inches and Y to be 38 inches, this box, that you will get here will be constructed such that the volume will be the largest, right? The largest. So in order to answer, they have used this notation with this word by, right? So you will have to say simply this, right? 19 appears twice there as, a, as the height and as the width, right? So 19, 19 inches by 19 inches again, height and width, but the length, the length is y right by 38 inches and this is it right this should be your answer if you look for this among the choices guys, professor you will find it there mm -hmm. 19 19 i have by a question uh yes here mm -hmm. yeah uh, why, is, uh, why is a 4x to pass the y is it not a four y's oh uh, yeah let's explain okay see let's explain look if you read here in the problem this this deals with shipment, right? When you when Amazon let's say ships stuff 
they look at this girth because around here you have noticed that for big packages they put some kind of belt right some kind of belt so this part yeah. is important for shipping for some reason right and not, not especially in shipping but for some reason this 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 perimeter will measure the amount of the be plastic belt that you have to put there to secure the box right so this is important yeah. this perimeter so this is called the girth the girth girth is this word girth is the, they say that the girth right distance around mm. so distance around for x right plus yeah. plus the length the length let's use a different color the length here plus this length which is this right the length is this yeah uh, the sum of those this this around distance plus this distance has to be 114 you follow now so oh, it's a four wise before no, but what why appears just one one this not part of the girth uh, C, right? Y is just the length of the box, this length of the box. The girth deals with the a distance around because remember uh, when, when they ship boxes, they put some kind of uh, plastic belt around the box, right? To secure the box, it has to do with that. So it's just a special uh, a dimension. It, it's just the sum of this around plus this, just once Y, four times X. You follow now better? Oh, okay, professor. Yeah, because the girth is associated to this, this part, not, not to this part. This part is just fixed. It's just, just once appears, y, right? It's 4x plus y, always the formula for this situation, right? Yeah. Yeah, I hope it helps. But you will have a chance to test yourself, CG, in the next problem, because I want you to do this yourself. Look, the next, the next. this one, right? very important. Now the box is. A position in a different form, but it's still the girth is there and the length, right? So can you try this? I will give you some hints here. Goal, goal here. Maximize, maximize volume, right? And what is the volume? Well, width times length times height. But um, I would recommend that you use these this, uh, labels. For the longest y, for the shortest x, x here, x here, x here, and x here, right? For the girth, for the girth, right? This girth is the distance around, we explain. If you deal with shipping, probably will understand this better, but uh, in general, it's just some plastic belt that they put around the shipment to secure it, right? So this is the girt. Yeah, so that's the goal, and this is the constraint. Constraint or limitation. Yeah, I will write it for you, right? The, the girt for X, Y appears as once, so plus Y, right? And that has to be equal to this guy. Yeah, make it equal to, now they want a girth of 120 inches. This guy. Yeah. yeah, and the volume as we discussed, right? The volume of a box is the height times the width times the length. So we X times X times Y, right? So comes up X squared Y. This is the volume, this is your limitation. Try to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, I see. 
some activity on the chat room, which is good, guys. Yeah, try, try. You have to be okay all the time, but um, try. Trying is good. Is how we actually learn, right? Yeah, great. Oscar, yeah, uh -huh. Oscar, very good. Uh, also, Ruby, uh, Grace, uh, Sarah. Yeah, very good, guys. Very good, yeah. It's a nice problem. I think uh, it, it kind of encompasses a lot of stuff that we have learned throughout the semester. It's good. Yeah, and it's not that difficult. So very good, Ruby, Grace, uh, CG. Aha, see, I'm glad that now you understand because it's always four times this because it's like a plastic belt that they put around the ship. And yeah, four X here, but once is the Y. Excellent. Very good, very good, guys. Very good, excellent. So um, let's go ahead and do this uh, together so we can cover more forms. Uh, if, if the volume um, is written here in terms of X and Y, right? Width, length, and height. And the goal is to maximize it. The constraint girth for X, right? This perimeter around uh, plus Y, the length of the box, right? 120. From the constraint, we isolate our Y. So Y, will end up being 120 minus 4x, right? Minus 4x. Uh -huh. Since I have y isolated quickly, I just replace this guy into my objective function, which is the volume of this box, right? So let's put it in there. And you may say, why are you doing that, Professor? Well, because we want to express our volume in terms of just one variable, not in terms of two variables, right? Just in terms of one variable. Because in calculus one, we work with functions in one variable, right? Later on, guys, when you take calculus three, they will show you how to use partial derivatives and figure out, figure this out in an easier way, perhaps, but that requires more knowledge, right? Yeah. Calculus one, do it this way. V equal 120x squared. Uh -huh. minus four x squared times x, x cubed, right? So our volume is this cubic function. Now you can write this here, this here, or if you don't, uh, just for the sake of variety, let me just show you that it doesn't really matter, okay? Here, if you set your derivative equal to zero and solve, and solve for x, that is what really matters. So derivative, of V will be equal to this. Two comes down, multiplies 120, that is 240, right? 240X minus, minus here, three comes down, multiplies four, that is a 12, X stays with an exponent one less, two. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is the derivative, right? Now we are supposed to set this equal to zero and solve for X. So let's do 240X minus 12 x squared equals zero. Now guys, here you can factor out the greatest common factor, but if these numbers do not have anything related or in common as divisors, probably it's better just to factor out x and quickly get this, x into 240 x is 240 minus x into this guy, 12 x, right? And clearly also this helps to see clearly that setting X equal to zero is not gonna be a good solution, right? X equal zero. Imagine if X is zero, no GERD can be posted here, right? So it doesn't make sense, X equal zero. So quickly you separate that from your good solution. Instead, you focus on the solution that will be gotten by solving this other little equation, right? minus 12x equal minus 240 and dividing both sides by negative 12, x equal 12 into 24 is just two, right? Zero, zero, negative sign they cancel. x equal 20. This makes sense. It's a good solution, right? Yeah, makes sense. Does not make sense, right? does not make sense, ignore it, right? So forget about this, keep this. 
this is the one. So now you have X, then you can find Y, right? Then you can find Y. How can I find Y, Professor? Well, X and Y are related via this constraint equation. Y is equal to 120 minus 4X. So you use that constraint equation, 120 minus 4X, but X, we just found out that X is equal to 20 to maximize the volume above, right? So we substitute it there. And as a result, you will get 120 minus 80 which is 40, right? But again, guys, if you uh, are taking an exam and the numbers are not that easy to manipulate in your mind, play safe and use the calculator, right? Okay, so, uh, uh -huh, you see, for very good. Mm -hmm. Good times. Very good. So 40, right? So this guy, 40. In the end, you may attach the units. The units are inches, but inches here, inches here. So you got to answer this way. Remember, they are using this word by, right? By to separate the main dimension. So you got to say 20 inches appears first there, 20 inches by. 20 inches again here because this base is a square base by 20 inches by. Now the length is different, right? It's just this 40, 40 inches, right? And that's it. That should be uh, the answer. So it's the first, okay, good. very good, excellent, excellent, thank you. Very good. All right, great. Yeah, we have mastered the, um, the girl problem here. Very nice problem with shipping. Now let's try to follow, go over some finance applications. I see I saw them here somewhere. Yeah, company. I think it's this. And, ah, yeah, number eight, I think is a good one. Number seven, number eight. Uh, number seven, let me explain this to you and then I will ask you to do number eight, okay? He says the following, he says, if the price charge for a candy bar is P of X cents, then X thousands candy bars will be sold in a certain city where P of X is equal to 113 minus X over 14. How many candy bars must be sold to maximize, maximize revenue, maximize revenue, let's see. Uh, gold, gold, maximize revenue, right? Maximize revenue. But remember, what is the revenue? The revenue is what you get out of selling your items, right? So let R represent or be the revenue. Mm -hmm. Then R is what I get out of selling my items, right? But how many items am I selling? Well, I'm selling X items, right? X in thousands of candies is the number of candies I'm selling. So the revenue should be the number of items I sell times the price, the unit price, right? But what's the unit price? Is here, P of X, right? P of X. So the revenue should be X times this P, but this P is a function of X. It's just this, 113 minus X over 14. Professor, where you got this from? I, I picked it up from here, right? They are telling you that there is a relationship between the price and the number of the items that you sell is this, right? It's from there. Now, what is left is just to, um, multiply X over to get your revenue function as a polynomial function, right? Minus so square over 14, right? And then uh, we have to take the derivative as usual, right? Set our derivative equal to zero and solve, solve for X, right? That will take us to the solution. All right, but let's do it carefully. So derivative here of this quadratic function should be, uh -huh, derivative of the first term, 113 minus two comes down, multiplying two over 14 
in simplified form, one over seven, right? One over seven X equals zero. Derivative equals zero. Now, when you solve this, many ways to solve it, you can multiply by seven. We can do many things here. I'm gonna just transpose this to the other side, changing its sign. It's 13, one over seven times X, multiply by seven both sides, and that should be it, right? Yeah. Times seven, times seven. Solve this equation, guys, any way you know how to solve it, right? And this should be the answer. Seven times, seven times 113. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 791 is what I get. 791. Now, be careful, guys, here. This is a tricky problem. Look how they are measuring the, the candy bars. They say, the price charged for a candy bar is P of X cents, then X thousands of candy bars, thousands of candy bars will be sold. So they are measuring this X in thousands of candy bars, right? So when you get your answer here, you have to say thousands of candy bars, not candy bars, right? You follow guys? This, so I'm gonna write here, thousands of, Candy bars. Candy bars. You follow that? So therefore, it should be this one, right? Be careful there, look. This has the same number, but it says candy bar, but they are measuring the amount of your production in thousands of candy bars, a thousand candy bars, right? Be careful there. Good, try to do this one, guys, number eight. It's similar, so follow this if needed, right? But figure it out. Hmm? And be careful with the units in the end, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then probably we'll do number 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's write the hint here. Call maximize revenue. Our revenue equal. Ah, I see. My students for number eight. Uh, it, it, it's uh, number eight. It, very close, Sarah, but I think you need to adjust something there. Yeah, very close. Yeah, try to adjust something uh, needs to be checked there. Yeah. yeah, try to do this slowly, nicely, and it should come out. Yeah, a lot of algebra, I understand, guys. But it's just the nature of this. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh -huh. Sarah, now, excellent, excellent. That's now you fix it. Ruby also, Oscar, very good, guys. Very good, excellent, excellent, very good. Yeah, great, right? Quickly, you get your revenue as X times P, number of units you sell, unit price. And then using the information that is given, uh -huh, CG also figures out. Very good, very good, guys. Using the information, this will be X times P, but P is given, is this, minus X over 28, multiplying over R is equal to 141X minus X squared over 28, taking the derivative, and setting this equal to zero, we're gonna get 141 minus two comes down, one over 14 simplifying two over 28, right? Times X equals zero. Transpose this to the other side. Do what you have to do to solve this equation, multiplying by 14, 141 is gonna give me the following. 
And in the end, guys, be careful. It's a tricky problem. I got 1,974, right? But this comes out in, in these units, 1,000 candy bars, 1,000 candy bars. Candy bars. All right, be careful there, guys. Uh huh. So, this, right? Very good, very good. Uh, excellent, excellent. This guy. Excellent. All right. Now, let me show you. Uh, this is uh, this is a polynomial function, probably this one, the last one, but I have to give you some background here. So, uh, let me explain this to you with this example, okay? It says, minimizing surface area. How to minimize the surface area of a box? Suppose the problem says a rectangular box with a square base, which is represented here, an open top, no top, and a volume of 216 cubic inches is to be constructed. What should be the dimensions of the box be to minimize, keyword minimize here, the surface area, the surface area is another um, a quantity I will explain what it is to you in case you don't remember. Surface area of the box, what is the minimum surface area? Okay, so if you label the main dimensions of this box as this, mm -hmm. X here, you say it has a, a square base, right? So X here, X here, and Y here, right? Then, then no top. So this is empty, right? And they're saying that you have to pay attention to the surface area. The surface area deals with all this area. Look, the area around the box. Imagine you have to paint this box, right? You have to paint over the surface area, right? This is the surface area. This together with this, you know, and on the back, there is another face there. You have to paint, right? That's the surface area. Okay, that's the surface that they, they want to uh, minimize, minimize, right? Okay, so this surface area can be represented by XY here, right? There of this face, XY here. X, Y on the back here, X, Y on the back here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the goal, goal minimize surface area, surface area, right? Now, but this surface area can be computed, right? Mm -hmm. Surface area of the box. Mm -hmm. What will be that? Surface area. Equal what? The area of the base plus plus area around here, right? The faces, area of vertical sides. Vertical, let's call them vertical faces. Okay. But now, this surface area, I'm gonna represent it with the letter S, okay? What will be that? Area of the base. The base is a square. Side length of the square is X. So the area of the base should be X squared, right? X squared. Plus area of the vertical faces. There are four vertical faces around. The area of one vertical face is four X. Then we multiply this, the, the, the area of one vertical is x times y, sorry, right? So it's x times y, x times y, x times y, x times y. Four times x times y will be the area of all the vertical faces together. So this is the surface area in total, okay? Now, constraint. Constraint, they want to keep the volume of this box fixed, fixed. Um, the amount of volume that they want to encompass here is 216 cubic inches. So volume, the constraint says that the volume should be equal to 216 cubic inches, cubic inches right from here. Mm -hmm. 
Now, but what does it mean? The volume is, as I explained, right? Is the width times the length times the height. The width is X, the length is X, and the height is Y. So we get this, what we saw before, right? X times X, X squared times Y, right? Times Y, just like when we were dealing with the girth, remember, problem? Yeah, X squared times Y. That's the volume, okay? But this volume has to be equal to this guy, 216. That's gonna be the constraint, right? That constraint. Solving for y here, dividing both sides of this equation by x squared, we get that y is equal to 216 divided by x squared. This guy now must be substituted into, into our objective function, which is the surface area, right? Here, there. So as a result of that, you are gonna get the following guys. Then, then let's continue here. S will be equal to X squared plus four X times Y. But Y is this, 216 over X squared, right? Let's do the math here. So then S will be equal to X squared 1x cancel, 1x stays. 4 times 216 is going to be 864. Okay, you can check it on your calculator, but then 1x cancel, 1x stays is this. Bring x up so that the computation of the derivative should be easier, right? So let's put this up. Now set derivative of s equal to 0 and solve. Solve for x, for x, okay? Now, taking the derivative equal to, and setting equal to zero will lead to the following. Twice x, the derivative of this part, the derivative of this minus 864 x raised to minus one, minus one is minus two, right? And that has to be set equal to zero, right? Equal to zero. Now let's solve this for x carefully, right? I am going to transpose this guy to the other side. The price I have to pay is I have to change the sign, right? It's the same as adding this quantity to both sides. I get this. Next, uh, let's rewrite the left side of this equation as follows. X raised to minus two, same as X squared into 864, right? At this point, let's multiply both sides of this equation by x squared. Uh -huh. Here we get rid of this denominator and we end up with this, 864 equal to x cubed, right? x times x squared x cubed. Dividing both sides of this equation by two, x cubed finally equal to what? Two into eight. Uh, four, eight, four, three, two, right? You follow guys? Very good. Final step, take cube roots in both sides. Taking cube roots in both sides. Remember when you take a root with a odd index, you don't have to put plus minus, right? It's just this, but what is this? Let's compute it in our scientific calculator. Cube root, for cube root, you have to use this function, right? that will allow you to put an index there on the top, cube root of this guy, 432 is 7.55 followed by a nine, which can be run to 7.56, right? 7.56, 7.56, rounded to the same places. In the end, attach the units inches, right? Inches. As soon as you get X, then you can get Y. How come professor I can get Y? Well, because X and Y are related, remember? This is the relationship between them. Y is 216 over X squared. 216 over X squared. But X was 7.56, right? It's square, right? It's like this, it's square. So Y comes up as 216 over 
3.56 squared. Uh -huh. 3.779 rounded to 3.78, right? 3.78 inches. 3.78 inches, right? And then after you find X and Y, you can even find the volume, right? The volume, remember the volume function was here. Volume was equal to X squared times Y, right? X squared times Y. Yeah, but we actually, we don't want the volume. We want the surface area that was minimized, but right? we're gonna use this function, surface area. S equal X squared plus four times X Y. So let's use that to find the minimum surface area. We are supposed to minimize the surface area, right? So S finally, should be equal to um, x squared, 7.56 squared, plus four times x times y, right? 3.78, and let's compute this. Yeah, s, uh, the minimum uh, surface area, right? So this computation will lead to the following, yeah, that will be, 56 is squared mm -hmm. plus four times 7.56 times 3.78. Uh -huh. uh, I get 1.71.46, and this should come out in a square inches because it's the surface area, right? 171.46 square inches. And that's the smallest surface area you can get. Okay, guys.